My name is Michael, and this is the Curiosium. Around 1972, when I was 12 or 13 years old, I built this electronic project and gave it to my dad. It's an oscillator with a manual push button to change the pitch and sounds like an American-style police siren. While it's not the first thing I built, it may be my earliest surviving make. So let's open it up and see what's inside. I think this 9 volt battery connector is supposed to reach the space in front of the circuit board so a battery will fit under the switches. We'll see if this works in a bit. There are two mono mini jacks but one just acts as a solder terminal. The other is audio out because the small speakers I had at the time all sounded terrible inside the case. The doorbell controls the siren pitch up and down and the all important power switch does what it's supposed to do though a toggle switch with clear on and off positions would have been better. The rest of the parts, two transistors, three resistors, and two capacitors, make up the siren itself. The next step is to lift the circuit board and draw a diagram that links all the parts together and documents the circuit that I used all those years ago. This took over 40 minutes, so let's speed things up about 8,000% so you don't have to watch the agonizing process of me looking at the same connections over and over trying to figure out what connects to what. The socket's a bit of a luxury, but I had it, and it let me try different transistors if the first one didn't work. It's also wired a bit strange. I had soldered the collector and emitter first, and with the board flipped used the wrong terminal for the base. When it didn't work, I realized what I'd done, and with those long leads just moved the base. I should have taken it apart and reworked it. Drawing this out, it was fun finding I had labeled places on the top and bottom of the board like the base and emitter of the power transistor. That was really helpful. Thanks, me. Now that this is all drawn out, let's get a look at the diagram and see what we have. That's all there is to it. The 0.2 microfarad capacitor controls the starting frequency, and the 30 microfarad capacitor controls the length of the rise and fall of the pitch. It's funny, when I started this, I thought I had no idea where this circuit came from. While working on it, I did start thinking it came from a magazine, but that's not a lot to go on. There were more than a dozen magazines with electronic projects at the time. A lot of mine came from ham radio fests where people sold, bought, and traded all kinds of things. That makes it even more complicated. My collection is a mix of random publications and issues, driven by my interest in whatever I found and could afford. While pondering this, though, the strangest thing happened. I remembered a story about an atomic bomb in space. I've always loved science fiction, so I dismissed it at first as a tangent, but it kept nagging me. So with a bit of poking around, I actually found it. Radio TV Experimenter, June, July, 1966, right there on the cover. Is there a Soviet H-bomb in orbit? And starting on page 73, Build the Screamer by Herb Friedman. Looking at the diagram, you might think I've had too much of the Kool-Aid. This isn't the diagram I've just drawn. There's an NPN where there should be a PNP, and a PNP where there should be an NPN. Chocolate and my peanut butter. But wait, there are similarities. If you look closely, my circuit is actually a rearrangement of the one from the magazine. Thanks to making this video, brain cells I thought were repurposed for song lyrics in the 80s have been reactivated, and I remember doing this. When I built this, I could only find an NPN power transistor, so I dug up a PNP transistor to go with it, and did a bit of electronic switcheroo and made the circuit work with what I had. As for the 27k ohm resistor being a 22, when you're harvesting your parts from old electronics and grab bags bought at ham radio meets, you take the closest thing you can find. Now that we have a diagram of the circuit and I've figured out where it came from, let's see if it works. Looks like the battery does fit under the switches like I'd hoped, though it is a little tight between the screws. I couldn't find a mono mini plug to go into the speaker jack, and honestly it looks a bit oxidized, something I probably should fix first anyway. The next best thing, of course, is to tap directly into the connections. So here we go, the moment of truth. Turn it on first. Oh, that's not good. That's not what I remember at all. 
I bet this electrolytic capacitor is partially dried up. It couldn't be open or the tone would be constant. It couldn't be a dead short, the circuit wouldn't oscillate at all. I should be able to see if I'm right by putting another electrolytic capacitor in parallel with this one. That's much better, much closer to what I remember. I think it's time I remove the old capacitor and try a few experiments. Okay, I've removed the capacitor completely. Let's see if it will oscillate without it. It should be a constant tone. That's good. Let's try the original capacitor again. Same bad behavior. How about a 22 microfarad capacitor just for fun? Definitely better than the bad one. And now a 33 microfarad capacitor. Pretty close to what I remember. Let's keep going. How about a 47 microfarad? What if we stuck a 100 microfarad capacitor in there? That might be a little long, but still, not too bad. I'd almost like to have a few values on a switch. What if we get really crazy out of spec and put in a 470 microfarad? Hmm, not a police siren, but, but it would make a decent civil defense siren. That's it for the teardown and testing. All that's left is to decide what to replace the capacitor with. What do you think? Would you put it back to the 30 microfarad, or would you choose a different value? Please let me know in the comments. Also, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and ring the bell. This is my first official video, but I plan to do many more. I have a long list of things I want to do. You can also support me on Patreon if you'd like to help me make this my full-time gig. Even $1 per video would help. Thanks for watching.